Hello, today's lesson is on uh, naming compounds and formula writing. Uh, in this lesson, what I'm going to talk about is nomenclature. And nomenclature is the word that we use for naming compounds. So it's a systematic way of naming, sub same, uh, naming things. You might have heard this in uh, biology. Uh, but again, we use it in chemistry to systematically name compounds. If you're dealing with um, the ions, okay, naming is very important. What I mean by that is if I say sulfur, sulfur, what you should write is S. No charge, no compound, it's elemental sulfur. If I say sulfide, that is now an ion. So therefore that will now have a 2 minus charge. Okay. If I have sulfate, that should clue you in that this is a polyatomic ion. So you should hopefully start memorizing those polyatomic ions. If you haven't done so, I would strongly recommend you do that. So sulf8 is SO4 2 minus. Sulfite is SO3 2 minus. So you can see the endings of each of these words really has a huge impact on what I'm writing. So when we have these different names with the different endings, it's very important to pay attention because if I say IDE, you should be looking up sulfur with a 2 minus. Sulfur is just the elemental substance. So think about this, pay attention to this, and watch for it as we start doing some other naming and formula writing. All right. Okay, let's take a look at, if I give you the name iron chloride. Okay, remember what I would tell you to do is write the symbol, F-E, name, write the symbol, C-L, and what I would do is i get on my periodic table and I'd look up iron. Uh-oh, there's no charge here. That's a problem. Chloride, still minus one, so that's not a problem. It's this iron, because I didn't tell you what the charges were for these. Your transition elements, there aren't any charges except for zinc, cadmium, and silver. Those are the only ones that really still have charges on them. So what do I do? How do I fix this problem? Well, the problem is I kind of cheated here a little bit. This is not the right way to write the formula for iron chloride. What I should have done is I should have said iron 2 chloride. I needed to use what's called a stock number. A stock number is a number that we use to indicate the number of charge on the cation. So this is what's called a stock number. All right, and the stock number tells you the charge on that ion. So therefore what I would do is I would write Fe for iron and then I would write 2 plus for the charge. So you don't have to look it up. I have to tell you it. I have to, what's hard is for you to go backwards, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, and then chloride would just be Cl minus, and we do just like we did before, Fe Cl2. So we would just balance the charges, and again, stock number, and this is what students get confused all the time, stock number tells you the charge on the cation. Not the anion, it does not tell you, listen, it does not tell you how many ions. This does not mean you write Fe2Cl, it does not tell you, no, it does not tell I'm going to see so many of you do that. It does not tell you how many, it tells you the charge on the ion. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. Let's see that I have cobalt 3 sulfide. All right, so I write cobalt. What does a three tell me? It tells me the charge on the ion. Sulfide is two minus, because it's sulfide. So therefore, when I balance these, I can do that little crisscross method, and I would end up with cobalt with a two, and my sulfur with a three. So there is my cobalt sulfide. And that's it. So I have to give you the stock numbers. Now, what happens if we go backwards though? So what happens if I'm going to name? And this is where students get the biggest, have the biggest difficulties with this, is in the naming with these things. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at naming um, compounds with multiple charges. So here, here we go. Let's say that we have uh, Ni and let's put in here sulfur. Okay, so I've got Nis. So we know it's nickel, so I'm going to name it nickel. What I would start doing from now on is always leave yourself a little bit of space. Sulfide. Okay, and a lot of people are just going to leave it nickel sulfide, but what you have to do is you have to realize that nickel 
is a transition metal. Right? Nickel is right here, it's a transition metal, so it's going to have to have a stock number. Little rule of thumb is that most transition metals need a stock number. Most transition elements or metals need stock numbers. Now I'm saying most because there are some that don't. The ones that don't need a stock number are the ones that you've got listed down here at the bottom. Zinc, cadmium, and silver. No stock number for these three here. They do not use a stock number, but any other element that you use in here would require a stock number. So that's how you know. All right. The, the way you know is that you, if it's a, if it's a transition metal and it's not silver, zinc, or cadmium, which have no stock numbers, you are going to have to put a stock number in. So now everybody freaks out and goes, "Oh my gosh! Well, what stock number do I use?" Well, you should know what sulfur is, right? Sulfur is a two minus, so therefore your nickel must be a two plus, right? Because you have to balance it. So it would be nickel two sulfide. So I would say nickel two sulfide. A lot of people miss those those stock numbers, but be careful. So the way you do this to make sure you get the stock number is if I give you the compound and I say it's something like um, copper, and we put oxygen here. All right, so if I'm going to name this, I'm going to name it copper. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of space and go oxide. Then I ask myself, is it a transition metal? Is copper a transition metal? I look on the periodic table, and oh, yes it is. It's very close to zinc, silver, and cadmium, but it is not one of those three. So it is a, it is a transition metal, but it is not silver, zinc, and cadmium. They have no stock numbers, so only three. So therefore, I have to have a stock number. So the question is, what's the stock number going to be? Well, if I have oxygen has a minus two charge, the copper has to be two plus. So therefore, what is the stock number? The charge of the ion. The charge of the ion. The charge of the ion. Last one I'm going to do is Cu2. Oh, I get students get these two mixed up all the time. We already know copper is a, a transition metal and that it's going to require a stock number. Oxide over here. Well, if my oxygen is 2 minus, what does a 2 down here tell us? It tells us how many coppers, right? So I need two coppers here. So therefore, if we think about this, this needs to be balanced. So we need to have a 2 plus here to balance out my oxygen. So if I distribute the charges, what will each of those coppers have for charge? Hopefully you know, positive 1. So my charge on each of those coppers is a plus 1. Again, it tells me the charge of my ion. That's the function of the stock number. All right, so we'll practice this in class. I know it's very confusing. A lot of students have trouble with this in the beginning. But that's why I start with it, because I know there's a lot of questions on this. So. Uh, next video lesson, I'll incorporate polyatomic ions, so make sure you get those memorized. Later.